Hey guys, Bugcat7 here. Okay, it is Saturday, April 27, 2019. And I want to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much, guys. And if you would kindly hit the like button, that would be real swell of you. Okay, guys. Well, I have a fascinating presentation for you today. And uh, I'm going to read a couple of articles and we're gonna look at some stuff some fascinating stuff I'm just riveted by it now and um, I have a subscriber to thank for it um, who is watching my video on the mystery megalithic ruins USA and you know if you haven't seen that posted yesterday and I don't know if they're megalithic ruins I mean I'm inclined to think as much because of certain reasons and we'll talk about that but you know because I got some comments about it you know it looks like natural formation at the very least okay to me from what I saw of the photograph you had neolithic construction there because you had purge stones um, wedge stones um, obvious dolmen type things you know things obviously placed one on top of another in certain areas these huge things you can see some other block wall construction there but that's you know modern stuff most likely or maybe aboriginal after the fact but it's hard to discern these things and you know I had referred people to Andrew Hall and the arc blasted earth okay because if this is what truly happened and thunderbolts project mentions it too about north america and even south america too at least in northern hemisphere not only in the americas but if something like this happened guys okay it would be like 10,000 Hiroshima's happening in one place, like at the Grand Canyon, for example. And there would be nothing left. No one, no thing. Nothing left. So if there was anything at the time that this could have occurred, okay, it's impossible that anything would survive any of that. And... The whole geology and geography and, you know, what we believe to be, you know, impact craters and all this kind of thing may not be that at all. And if this thing occurred on a natural stone structure, okay, or close enough to it, or the structure was far enough away from it, you know, it may have sustained these types of damages we've seen with People like Brian Forrester, when he goes to Egypt and Peru, he shows these things, evidence of like, you know, charring on the stone, melting, etc. Sylvia goes through this, you know, she shows some of these megalith constructions and, you know, they look like they've been melted by something or burnt by something. Well, certainly electrical discharge could cause those things, but if you haven't seen this video and you might want to it might change your mind about how we interpret the geology on this planet okay what we're taking for the ice age and you know impact craters and other things that uh, you know are explained by other means may not be that at all it may have everything to do with this okay and the thunderbolts project is very competent educated people some of them mainstream academics as i said physicists people doing hands-on experiments because electricity is scalable guys it's scalable you could do it on any level okay that's the great thing about electricity so in any case if you haven't seen that, take a look at it, and you know, it may have everything to do with this, okay? And um, how it relates, because we've seen other sites on the planet that may have been megalithic sites that look like they've been melted or, you know, whatever it is, but they're awfully suspect. Like I said, at the very least, it's a neolithic site. 
with Neolithic constructions, okay, which are perch stones, standing stones, um, you know, um, uh, balanced stones, leaning stones, wedge stones, okay, these are all things that are evident. And certainly in the northeastern part of, you know, the United States and, you know, on the eastern part of the United States, obviously here in Virginia, okay, you have these Neolithic constructions. And as I believed, and I said it before in my videos, that these things were tests of strength, including split stones. You have naturally occurring split stones and what I call artificially occurring split stones that there were these tests of strength by, as the museum out by Lovelock Cave says, by these slightly more robust people, okay? So if they were slightly more robust, as I say, is a euphemism for a larger, okay, then it's a lot easier to move big stone around, right? Okay? And even if you take it into the Paleolithic stage, okay, where gravity might have been different, right? Because we had the megafauna that mysteriously died off. They claimed that they were kill all killed off by human beings. That's what they claim. And other ways, and explain it all away, and it's a bunch of bullshit, okay? Gravity changed, and Rupert Sheldrake goes through that. Gravity is not a constant, okay? Rupert Sheldrake proves it, period, end of story. It's not a constant. It changes, all right? So slightly more robust people who lived in the Paleolithic with a different kind of gravity were moving stone around. Maybe it was a lot easier for them. Think about it, all right? So in any case, this very nice subscriber, who's been a loyal subscriber, Christy McGowan at Dark Ocella Door, okay, referred me um, to um, the Azores and these constructions in the Azores. And um, I just... You know, before I actually got into looking at some of this stuff, which I did, and I was like, wow, there's something there we got to talk about. But I wanted to look and see if there were any recent articles or archaeological news on it, anything recent, okay, to sort of get me, you know, boned up on it. You know, I've seen some things. I think Chuck did one on uh, the Canaries, and I believe he also did um, the Ace Horse here. You know, and other people have done some stuff on it, but we're going to talk about it a little bit differently and with more in depth here. But just to introduce you to it and myself to it and everything, these articles are good. There's two short ones and a little bit longer one. So let me try to get through all this stuff because I've got a short time to do it with. But I just want to show you this um, satellite picture, if it'll come back up here of Tercera Island, which is in the Azores here, okay? But before we even look down on that, to just give you an idea what the shape of the island is or whatever, I just was looking at the undersea geography here, and I couldn't help but notice these strange, for no reason, lines here that seem to converge on this. This one's especially suspicious here. There's a number of them. One. There's another one here. And there's one actually leaving here. And if we follow that, let's see if we can do it here. It just keeps on going. And that leads right into the mouth 
of the Mediterranean where a bunch of other strange straight lines and things converge upon the mouth of the Mediterranean. You have this area here, which is very suspicious, these things, because the rest of the seabed is doesn't look like this. This is a low area here, it looks like, but interesting stuff there. And out by the Azores here, there's these weird lines, straight lines, leaving, coming to, and leaving the area. In here, there's some sort of weird squarish constructions over here. And I don't know, but it, you guys should look at this, you know, on a uh, Google map, satellite view. And there's just some weird stuff going on around here. There's um, other weird things going on here. Like these things here, for example. You see what the rest of the seabed looks like. But like these are evenly spaced here. And they form like a ring here. And... I don't know, I'm just saying, it's these lines and stuff underwater that go to these places and some other strange stuff going on here, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it, but, <clears throat> you know, you guys look at it, you know, and see what you can make of it. I just find it very strange that they, and, it, and and by the way, I think these lines go through the Mediterranean too. Let's see here. Yeah, there's some weird lines here in the Mediterranean too. They just keep on going. They just keep on going, too, until they make landfall, more or less, or at least where landfall used to be at one time when the sea levels were lower, or this whole area was, you certainly look at these grid things over here, it looks like habitation, other structures underwater there. Surprised they had letting us see this stuff. All right, guys, so let's take a look at that. Uh, I'll get back to it here. I'll just show the island briefly before I get into these articles. So as I said, I wanted to bone up. See all these lines of conversion into the mouth of the Mediterranean. There's another weird chain of things going on over here. I don't know if you can see. It's very faint right here. And it goes across the mountaintop. It's very strange, but in any case, Look at this island here. And these islands, these islands all have sort of fortifications on it. Old fortifications that seem, you know, there's some megalithic stuff incorporated into it. And that was what Christy was talking about. It seemed to her that there's this megalithic stuff incorporated into the structures on the you know this is one of the islands they all have these fortresses on them stuff but this is that's for part two like i said i wanted to bone up on it so let me try to get through these articles real fast and you can hear it as well and about current archaeology and some heroes here that are actually you know bucking the system that doesn't want to you know accept you know maybe a new um history, a new chronology, a new thinking about this, and this is the 21st century, guys, this is not, you know, I mean, think about it, they're just discovering these things now, okay, so the point is, is it ain't over yet, folks, you understand, anybody who says, well, I understand completely, you know, no, you don't, okay, we're just getting to the bottom, of it. we're just scratching the surface with this stuff. And I hope I'm part of doing this with you guys here because otherwise this stuff's, you know, going to stay in these, what, obscure journals and magazines and say, who reads that stuff? You know, only eggheads like us. All right, so let me go to an article from 2013. It's a short article here, but 
This is in the Portuguese American Journal. Pico, new archaeological evidence reveals human presence before Portuguese occupation in the Azores. Yay! <coughs> Archaeologists from the Portuguese Association of Archaeological Research have identified new archaeological evidence on Pico Island that supports their belief that human occupation of the Azores predates the arrival of the Portuguese by many thousands of years. Many thousands of years. The new evidence comprises of a great variety of proto-historic pyramidal rock structures, some of them 13 meters tall. The Azorean archipelago was discovered uninhabited by the Portuguese around 1427. Okay, so a long time ago, 15th century. All right. Okay, and here's one of these thingies. It's a little tiny picture. But a lot of small stonework there. Um, and well compacted and put together like that. And you can do that with smaller stones. It gets more difficult with uh, irregular stones. You know, you have to collect, this case, you have to collect stone of all a certain, you got to like call them. Okay, I know something about building stone walls myself. I was doing it out there in the, in the forest to see for myself how it went. Okay, archaeologists working on site believe that the structures were created by ancestral occupiers of the island, suggesting they were places of worship with funeral ritual purposes. They have said that dozens of similar structures have been identified at in the Madalena area of Pico Island. So that's like a big area for all of these things. According to APIA's archaeologist Nuno Ribeiro and Annabella Jaquinito, artifacts were also found on site which may predate the Portuguese settlement on the island. So may, I don't like that. So either they do or not, what are you talking about? <coughs> okay, they believe the structures may have been built according to an oriental plan aligned with summer solstices which suggests they were built with an intended purpose. Okay, so it's all good. They just don't know for certain. There's no written record or anything else to refer to. So they're guessing. Okay, it's all fine as long as we all know they're guessing. Except for these third party people who are like, yeah, they know everything. No. Okay. <clears throat> they also believe that the Madalena pyramidal structures, known by the locals as Moroicos, are analogous to similar proto-historic structures found in Sicily, North Africa, and the Canary Islands, which are known to have served ritual purposes. Okay, there's another one of these guys. Very interesting construction and design. It'd be nice to see a lot more of them. It says here, one of the 140 pyramids observed by the archaeologists in the Madalena area of Pico Island, Azores. Some of these structures reach about 13 meters, 43 feet high. Recent additional archaeological findings in the Azores support the evidence of earlier human occupation of the island. So there's stuff that's even earlier. Last year, archaeologist Nuno Ribeiro revealed having, having found rock art on the island of Tercera, which he also believes predates the arrival of the Portuguese by many thousands of years. So who knows how many thousands of years? Many, maybe? In the last three years, Nuno Ribeiro has claimed to have found a variety of additional ancient archaeological remains on other Azorean islands. They include an epigraph from the Roman times, Carthaginian sanctuaries, cave art, and megalithic structures. Okay, megalithic structures. He has also claimed his findings have been published in scientific magazines and presented at international conferences with great acceptance by the international scientific community. Okay, so he's nothing to sneeze at. He's legit. Okay, and here's another one of these suckers. Like the step, stone step pyramid. And we have our own stone pyramids here in the United States. Chuck did one on one. 
I saw one in Jim Vieira's work. I mean, they're around. They were around. And then probably a lot more that we don't know about because they all got taken down and used for roadkill. So that was the end of that article. Just a little interesting thing there about the pyramids found on these islands that they believed that were uninhabited. And nobody was there before. And they're just figuring this all out now, guys. 21st century. You get it? Okay. So let's read this very interesting one real quick. Portuguese archaeologists find evidence of ancient civilization in the Azor Islands linked to the Sami Laps! Exclamation point. Okay, so if you don't know who the Sami are, the Sami are these people. Okay, they are finno ugric people inhabiting Satmi, which today encompasses large parts of Norway and Sweden, northern parts of Finland, and the Murmansk Oblast of Russia. The Sami have historically been known in English as Laps or Laplanders. Sami ancestral lands are not well defined. Yeah, 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 they're not well defined because if they were to define them, then the people might want them back. Like, these are the Indians, you know, these are the Aboriginal people, the native peoples of this area of the world, okay? And with the same kind of shit happened to them, they got kind of squeezed into their areas, you know, whereas they were once the masters of these things, they, you know, reptilians came in and pushed them around. So it's like, you know... They're not well defined as long as they don't want them around, you know, to claim these lands. But as soon as they don't want to claim them, they'll say, yeah, we'll define them for you one day. <coughs> okay, so they're linking this to the Sami people here. Um, not only in the Ace Wars, but listen to what the article says, okay? The Azor Islands match exactly the geographical description of Atlantis by the Greek philosopher Plato, okay? This is from this site called People of One Fire. I don't know what that means, but this is the kind of archaeology, ethnology, history, they all go into that stuff. This discovery could be the missing link that explains both the voyages of the Yuchi across the Atlantic Ocean and the origin of the Appalachian, okay? We're talking about American... Indians, as they call them, and native peoples. That's what we're talking about. Okay. The UT said that they came across the Atlantic from the, quote, home of, quote, home of the sun, unquote. Uchi descendants from Georgia are showing up with Sammy Lap, Finnish, pre-Gaelic, Irish, Basque, and Pinoan DNA. Okay. So that's very different than just coming up with European DNA. Okay. Because of the Basque, you see, at the very least. Apalachi is the Europeanization of the Pinoan word Aparash, which means, quote, from the sea, descendants of, unquote. The real Apalach lived in the corridor from Savannah to northeast Georgia. The Florida Apalachi began as Appalach colony among Arawaks from Peru. Okay, so you see that there? Talking about a link to the Lat people, okay, to people in the Americas with through their DNA. All right, this is what they're finding, and you're finding this, you know, weird article somewhere, but you know, not running around screaming about it. They don't want to, because that anything white is going to be seen as some sort of negative thing or whatever but it's just who cares about that let's get to the fucking truth already all right you know people have their political reasons for doing shit. i don't give a fuck about them all right just to put it in plain new york english all right it's not what we're talking about here i'm not that stupid Mark Veal sent this article to the people of On Fire, and it is fascinating. Portuguese archaeologists have found rock structures and petroglyphs in the Azor Islands that are pretty much identical to those in the portion of Lapland in Finland during the late Neolithic and Bronze Ages. Also, numerous coins minted in Carthage have been found on some of the islands in this archipelago. Until recently, the official history of the Azores was that they were uninhabited. 
when first discovered by mariners around 1427 AD, and that there was no evidence that anyone had ever lived there earlier, okay? So you see this? It's 21st century, guys. Small number of alleged tombs carved into the rocks that were used for burials have been identified on the islands of Corvo, Santa Maria, and Tercera by Portuguese archaeologist Nuno Ribeiro, speculated that they might date back 2,000 years, alluding to a human presence on the island before the Portuguese. However, his interpretation was dissed by more conservative scholars who said that these caves were natural, not man-made. So, who gives a damn what they say? We know they're liars. They're Alish Herglishkas. Recent archaeological work has identified petroglyphs and various stone structures in the Azores which couldn't possibly be natural. They are identical to worship sites in Scandinavia when the region was inhabited primarily by ancestors of the Sami. Okay. You see those lines in there and this thing too. All references acknowledge that the Azor Islands were created by volcanoes and still contain volcanoes. No one seems to have noticed the large caldera on the eastern side of this archipelago. The Greek philosopher Plato stated that Atlantis was due west of the Pillars of Hercules, Gibraltar. It was a, on a volcanic island which exploded violently, causing Atlantis to sink into the sea. Around 1200 BC, a tsunami struck the Atlantic coast of Iberia, destroying all the coastal cities. By the same time, a tsunami swept over Denmark and southern Sweden, wiping out a Bronze Age civilization there. The Yuchi apparently arrived in the Savannah area a little after 1200 AD and probably are the progenitors of the Deptford culture. I have no idea what that is. If Atlantis really existed, Savannah may have been one of its overseas trading ports, which I contend about the Northeast area, okay? Different story, different time, guys. Plan of the Bilbo Mountain Port is very similar to the Bronze Age ports on the coast of Iberia, talking about it here in the Americas. Your Aboriginal people of the Canary Islands call themselves the Guanches. It is believed that they arrived in the Canary Islands between 1200 BC and 1000 BC. The Guanches migration legend states that they were from Atlantis. The Guanches were still in the Neolithic age when first contacted by the Spanish. And I have an article about it, maybe we'll read it a different day. A second article in the same E scene describes an equally fascinating discovery. Archaeologists working on the oldest known structure in the world, Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. Despite not having any evidence of agriculture, metallurgy, or pottery, the people of this region produced remarkably sophisticated stone architecture engraved with a variety of animals and abstract symbols. Several of those symbols can be found in tattoos of contemporary Aborigines in Australia. Australian archaeologists now believe that the Australioid people settled Australia around 55,000 BC but may have visited there as early as 80,000 BC. And that's the end of the article. I, you know, just was one I came across from 2017 that added that. But here's the really interesting one. Let's see if we can get up to at least a little bit to it. You see this thing. Mysterious marks found in rocks in the Azores archipelago of Portugal. Okay, and this Costa lady who's like a hero here. Okay, controversy surrounds artifacts on Azores Islands, evidence of advanced ancient seafarers. The Azores Archipelago is about 1,000 miles off the coast of Europe, about a third of the way to North America across the Atlantic. The islands belong to Portugal, and the official historical record has long held that they were uninhabited until the Portuguese expeditions colonized them in the 15th century. But a controversial alternative theory is gaining ground. Some experts, including the president of the Portuguese Association of Archaeological Research, Nuno Ribeiro, have said that rock art and remnants of human-made structures on the island suggest the Azores are occupied by humans thousands of years ago. This assertion is controversial because it had been used to support a theory that a trade route exists between the Phoenicians, the Norse, and the New World. Oh, how dare you! <coughs> Long before contact with the New World is conventionally thought to have taken place. We will explore this theory in connection to the Azores in more detail later. Okay, I'm going to try to get through this. If my phone cuts me off, I'm sorry, guys. I'll try to post the article in the description so we can get through it. Okay, that's the Azores right there. Calvera there. It, it is also curious that some of the structures appeared to be from the Stone Age, suggesting a civilization existed at the time was advanced enough to travel so far to colonize the remote isles. 
This is another point of view of contention. Ribeiro began speaking of his findings in 2010 and thus helped spark a raging debate about claims of ancient settlements on the Azores. The controversy led Portugal's government to establish an expert commission to investigate further. In 2013, the commission declared that any perceived remnants of an ancient civilization were either natural rock formations, okay, or structures of mere modern origin. However, Antoinette Nieta Costa, a postdoctoral student at the University of Porto in Portugal remained unconvinced and continued to research into the hypothesis that the Azores were inhabited in antiquity and even prehistory. Okay, so she kept at it. She didn't care. Earlier this month, Costa had a meeting with Regional Secretary of Education and Culture for Azores, Avelino de Menezes. De Menezes was one of the experts to sign off the government report denying the antiqu antiquity of the artifacts. After years of being denied government permission to conduct archaeological investigations in Asia, Costa now has some government support for her research. Okay, so she's got some support. That's pretty good. All right. But Costa told Epic Times via email that Dimensis has now expressed an openness to her hypothesis. After years of being denied government permission to 